Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Happy Valentine's Day. If you love Sudoku and logic puzzles, this is the place for you. Um, and we got this charming email from uh, Rodolphe Le Pigre. Uh, Dear Mark and Simon, my wife and I really enjoy the unending stream of amazing puzzles that you provide on YouTube. Solving them has become part of our daily routine ever since I introduced my wife to Sudoku last year. She has now become a great solver and gained a lot of confidence in her ability to think logically. Since my wife enjoys solving thermo Sudoku puzzles so much, I got the idea to set one for her as a Valentine's Day gift. I'm really happy with how it turned out, so I thought, why not send it to Mark and Simon? So here we are. This is the um, thermo and Kropke puzzle from uh, Rudolf, and uh, congratulations to him for creating it. I love how it turned out. I put it in a card to my wife this morning, and even she thought it was cute. So this is great news. That's as good a gift as you can give a thermo Sudoku loving wife as our thermo app, which she would also love too. Um, along with all our other apps. Uh, also on Patreon, don't miss... Well, first of all, on, on the main channel, we have put up the uh, interview with Tan Tan Dai. This is amazing. I mean, if you are intrigued by how quickly people can solve Sudoku, you have to watch this. She is incredible at solving fast. Um, there is a... There was one other puzzle that we did in that interview um, that didn't make the 25 minute cut. So we put that up on Patreon for anybody who's following us there. Um, or in fact, in some ways, even more incredible. It's such a, a tricky variant and she just nails it. Uh, she is an absolutely brilliant solver and that's well worth watching. Um, now, also on Patreon today, Scott Strosal's Sudoku Hunt, um, Tracking the Triptych. <laughs> which is a brilliant title. Do have a look at that. If you like tough puzzles, this is a good one. I mean, really interesting uh, trio, obviously, of puzzles, but uh, do give it a go. Absolutely fascinating Sudoku from Scott Strasal, who really is becoming absolutely epic at creating uh, hunts and uh, themed Sudoku. Brilliant stuff. So, that's there on Patreon as well um, for those people who are following us there. And thank you to those who do that. Thank you to you who have subscribed here on the channel. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Um, we, we love you to follow us. And with that, I'm going to have a go at this puzzle. Do try it on the link below the video. The rules are uh, thermo rules mean that numbers along thermos must increase from the bulb to the end here. They must increase in each direction from the bulb to each of the ends. So that must be smaller than any of those three, I guess. Now, these are Kropke dots. So black dots indicate a ratio of one to two between two cells. So that could be one and two, two and four, four and eight, or three and six. White dots indicate um, a consecutive relationship. So these are numbers that are next to each other. Now, I haven't been told if there is a uh, negative constraint, i.e. whether these two cells could be consecutive or have a ratio of one to two. So I'm not, I'm going to assume that there is no negative constraint in operation. And I will make it clear in the video rules that you can see already whether there is or not. But I'm solving without knowing that. So that's my extra handicap. Now, do give it a go. I'm going to try now. Let's get cracking. Well, you know me, I am not ashamed to uh, put in the candidates on longer thermos and indeed even sometimes on quite short ones. So those are the possibilities around this eight cell thermo, which is the longest. I'm definitely going to do the seven cell thermos too, which have two degrees of freedom, just in case anything pops out of that. Although I am also now eyeing up a run of two black dots which are reasonably limited in their way as well. So let's see how we do with those marked up. Ooh. Yeah, I mean it's interesting, like this column's interesting straight away actually. Where do one and two go? Well clearly not in the middle of this thermo or on the end of this one. Therefore, 
they must be in these three cells, which are all connected. So one must be on one end, two must be in the middle, and we must have a three in there as well. That is actually going to sort out the, the end of this thermo all the way to the end, because once three is gone there, this has become a four, and we can fill it in all the way to the end, which is a nine. So then we end up with a one, two, three, triple there. Now we know these ones are seven, eight, and nine. That doesn't resolve much else. The sevens tell us that seven is on this group of cells. And therefore, since they're all consecutive and they don't include eight, they must be seven, six, five in some order. And that's going to let us take five out of that. That stops that being a four, stops that being a three. Now we've got a one, two pair on the bulbs and we can fill in three and four which means that's not a four. Here we have a four, eight, nine triple, two of them connected by a black dot. So that's the four, eight pair. Now six is connected by a black dot to something which has to be three. Now I was gonna look at this earlier, sorry. The, the, the middle cell of a th run of three that have to all be different has to be two or four. And we can see the two there. So this is now a four with two or eight either side of it. The reason for that is three and six are not in a continuation with anything. You can't have a 12 or a one and a half on one end. So the only run of threes possible are from one, two, four, and eight. So four there means that's not a four, which means this isn't a five, not a six here or a seven there. And in fact, now eight there decides what that is. Um, this isn't four, that didn't help much else there. Right, but we also have an eight here, and that's saying eight can't be in these cells. So the eight in box nine must now be here. Eight in box three has to be in one of those two. Um, let me, if I was to pencil mark this, there's four degrees of freedom. Not sure that I'm going to bother doing that. Actually, it might be more useful on this one over here. So um, let's go all the way. Two, four, five, six, not seven. Three, five, six. Ah, oh, that's quite limited and takes out some of the earlier ones. Five, six, or eight, six, eight, or nine. Um, so. One and two must be over here, and neither of them can be on this uh, point of the V because it's the third cell along the thermo. So one and two are a pair in those two cells. That's very nice, actually. Um, now that means the eight in the box has to go up at the top here. That means that nine can't be on the thermo anywhere. That nine says it can't be there, so we can fill in nine in the middle. Nine will be in one of those two cells. Um, three. So this thermo now can't contain one or two. So the degrees of freedom have all evaporated down to one. And that's a very interesting number here in row three, column eight, a five, six pair now, which is looking along the line and making these three, oops, three, eight, nine. And now we can fill in the beginning of that thermo as one and two since the three is there. So that's really helped. That fixes those bulbs. This is now a two, three pair. We have a five or six there. One in the box must be in that cell. Two, nine, eight, four. Right, this can not be a four. So it's three, five, six, or seven. Actually, that doesn't really help me with the cage. But, ah, we have a five, six pair in column eight. So that is now three or seven. So four must be on the thermo, five must be on the thermo, six must be on the thermo, but I don't know quite where any of them go. Um, what I do know is that four is in one of those two cells. And combined with that four, it means four has to be here somewhere on this thermo and that really is helpful that gives me four there and i can push that along five six seven 
Uh, the two can't be in those two, so two goes there. One and three there. Now, I've got a black dot I haven't used, and it can't have a four and eight. Ooh, it could be three, six, or else it's one and two. Um, but it can't be one and two, because look, that would make four cells in the row have to be one, two, th or three. That's really nice. So it must be a three, six pair. So now we have three on the thermo in the bulb. So the one in this box can't be on this thermo anywhere. And it must be here, given these other ones we have in the grid. Two must be down in one of these two. Again, that's similar. It can't get on that thermo now that three's on it. And that fixes this pair just as the one has fixed this pair. We have four and five out there, and now one of those is on a black dot. That certainly can't be five, because we can't put 10 in a Sudoku cell, or two and a half. Seven goes in there to finish the row. Two, eight, and nine here. Ah, this is a naked single. That's a nine. How inappropriate for Valentine's Day. Um, a Five and six pair here. That's nice as well. This is nice and approachable. I think that is appropriate for the day, personally. I'm sure Simon's done a ridiculously rock hard video again, as he often does lately. But I mean, the puzzles we've been getting are amazing. Uh, four, seven, and nine triple here. Nine and four can be moved now. That four is seeing the central cell. That's been available for a while. Only just looked at it. That's a naked single one. Uh, this could be seven or nine. That one has sorted out the two one pair. That eight sorted out this two eight pair. So now at the top we have a seven there, which means we can fill in the rest of the thermo very straightforwardly. Six and five are resolved. That means we can finish off box one as well. There we go. This two looks across at this one, two pair, which looks at that one, three pair. Um, three, four, two, one, five and six. So five there, six here. Three, seven and nine. That one is a seven because it can see three and nine. Those go in five, seven, seven, four, and we finish there. So that is the solution. We definitely don't need a negative constraint. Um, I'm going to see, I, and therefore I'll show the rules without a negative constraint. Not 100% sure whether, yeah, it does apply. Otherwise, two and three, for instance. Oh, and loads of these cells, actually, it was totally obvious. You couldn't possibly achieve that thermo without white dots along it without the negative constraints. So I should have been able to work that out right at the start. But that's a nice puzzle. Do do look into this other stuff, as I say. I mean, the puzzles we have, that, that Scott Strassel puzzle hunt is brilliant. The prize for the quickest solution to it, and it's not easy, is going to be uh, to be able to solve to be able to test solve our next Sudoku hunt, which is going to be the March reward. And we're looking forward to releasing that already as well. Um, so I that may still be up for grabs, although I imagine by the time this video comes out, somebody will already have finished Scott's hunt. Um, but thank you very much for watching and uh, hope to see you again on the channel soon. Bye for now.